everyone. This is Debbie with Light Up Your Worth. And I'm so excited that you're here with me as I bring on my newest guest, my friend, Mary Jane Allen. Um, I can't wait for you to get to know her a little bit more. I've been fortunate enough to have been connected with Mary Jane, gosh, like 2017. It's been many, many years, 2016. And we met in a Facebook group of all places um, and just formed this really beautiful uh, relationship. We've done work together. Um, I have experienced uh, multiple sessions with her myself. And I gotta tell you, there was a lot of magic happening in these and really a lot of clarity coming into my own life and decisions that I was making at the time. And so I am very, very pleased to be able to introduce my friend, Mary Jane Allen. Welcome. Thank you so much, Debbie. I'm delighted to be here with you. I've been really looking forward to this interview with you. Yeah, it's so, it's so magical um, how so many of us have connected um, you know, through an online presence and you, you form these really, truly deep relationships, these connections. I feel like they're soul connections. I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so I, I always like to mention that because sometimes, you know, there's quite a few online type of communities and, you know, when you start finding your peeps, um, like who you end up staying connected with, um, especially over time, you know, like how they they integrate and we come in and out of each other's lives. And it's just such a beautiful thing. So I'm so happy that we were able to coordinate this and make it happen. And, and um, so looking forward to hearing more about your, your journey and how this all started. Um, and so uh, would love to hear, you know, as much as you feel comfortable with sharing and uh, bring us along for this for your journey. Thank you. I'd love to. Um, I was one of those children, you know, and um, it took me a while to uncover this, of course. But uh, I was one of those children who could see energies, um, in fact, dead people, <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was very young. Um, I remember seeing my paternal grandfather, who was probably the closest person in my life to me. He really was my protector. I remember seeing him on the day of his funeral um, and I blocked it out because, you know, I simply was in denial. Like I thought, well, you know, he's not, people were telling me he was dead and I was like, well, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's not. You're a liar. <laughs> you know, no. So um, that was a very confusing time for me. And it took, it took me many years to actually come to grips and believe that he was on the other side. Um, and then I went through a long period of time where I, I simply blocked out the, um, my mediumship gifts because I guess, you know, partly because there was so much unresolved grief around his death. It was very sudden. He died in the middle of the night of a heart attack um, in his 60s. So he was quite, you know, he was quite young uh, to die. Um, and, you know, I, I just didn't want to kind of go there and <laughs> see what was also waiting for me when I knew that, you know, I could connect uh, to the other side. Um, I remember uh, his son, my dad, of course, having met many conversations with my dad over the years. We would we would sit. We had, we had this habit. We we would sit in lawn chairs um, on uh, the wharf at our cottage, and we would have these. I don't know, kind of soul uh, retrieving conversations in a way. I guess you know we um, we were kind of just talking about why are we here you know what are we really doing here what is this about you know why you know why do these things happen in life what does this mean you know all of these things so I had a lot of those conversations with my dad over the years and you know I I really I just didn't know why I was here you know I um you know I took the usual path I went to university you know got that done and um it really didn't resonate with me. I worked in offices, you know, for, you know, years. And it, again, nothing really resonated. And um, I just, um, I just was at a point about 10 years ago, and I thought, 
you know, really, I really need to know what I am supposed to be doing. Who I am I? What am I? You know, I just, you know, I knew there was something in in me that was very much undiscovered, and um, it led me to my first mentor and. Uh, a wonderful woman who is still a dear friend and we work together on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, uh, she was offering Akashic Records readings at the time and I, I didn't know anything about the Akashic Records. Um, but I, um, I connected with her and she uh, did an in-depth uh, reading and a lot of clearing work for me. And um, it led me on a journey of self-discovery that, um, you know, essentially opened up my mediumship gifts. It opened up my intuitive um, abilities, um, many of which came from my paternal grandfather's lineage, which is interesting. Um, anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it was it was quite a, a quite a, a journey. Um, and you know, the reason that, of course, the reason that many um, many of these gifts were hidden. Um, and I know there are a lot of people who will be listening who will resonate with this. Um, as I as I found, um, when we are in relationships that, in some way, don't serve us or we're not aligned to them, whether it's a romantic relationship or a marriage or you know a business partnership, whatever it is, we can lose parts of ourselves um, in those um, interactions, if you will. Um, and what I mean by that is part of our soul's purpose or blueprint, you know, however you want to phrase it. But um, in the work that I do with clients, um, you know, in, in, in helping them with their deep-seated grief through my mediumship or my forensic intuitive work, um, I see a lot of, as I'm doing the clearing or, you know, asking it to be done and witnessing it, I see a lot of people's uh, blueprints being restored to them so that they then have, you know, um, realizations about and dreams about, you know, oh, well, you know, I've always been drawn to that, but I didn't know why. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like purpose work, you know, essentially. And it's been, it's been scattered to the, to the winds because we've been in relationships that truly didn't, resonate with us didn't serve us in our highest and best good you know there was a lesson to be learned from them or something you know there was a reason for it but um usually it was not in alignment with our highest and best and and then we ended up giving away parts of ourselves in that relationship so that's a lot of um what i see coming in for people when um when i do work on on them um in my sessions and it's a very beautiful thing to see because then people um, I like to follow up with clients. I'm quite on hands-on, and uh, I um, I like to hear from them. And you know, they will say that they've had you know big realizations, and and um, you know they're 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 changed. You know, it's 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 very uh, transformative to see, and um, extremely rewarding for me. And um, I you know I think one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, is you know just seeing someone so dramatically changed from the beginning of a session to the end, and I think probably the the kind of session that that usually takes place the most in is a mediumship session um, for someone who has whether they know it or not uh, deep unresolved grief, um, which is holding them back in many ways, including. Um, seeing and knowing what their purpose is and, and what their role is meant to be in, um, in you know, uh, working here on the planet, helping and serving others, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, right? I mean, being able to retrieve all parts and pieces of us for it to all come together. I, I, there's so many women who are including you know, including myself, right, that was in a relationship for a long period of time, and when it ends, you just feel so lost, and you do start to wonder, why, why did all this happen, what's my next direction, and being able to provide that guidance, that's just priceless, really, and where you start to understand your own self, or super, super powerful. Jane, to be able to, you know, even see 
and connect somebody with their own blueprint that's already there. And uh, that's just re remarkable to be able to do that, you know, um, and, and connecting, I always say it's like connecting the dots backwards, you know, of why certain things have happened and when it all starts to come together and uh, how much more peace it can bring to us. Exactly. Um, you know, and I think for many people who, you know, when, when we feel stuck or, or lost or incomplete in some way, you know, um, that's usually, you know, what it is. There's something blocking us from knowing our truth, um, from having those pieces, being able to retrieve those pieces back to ourselves. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's interesting for me. I think one of the biggest surprises for me has been, you know, when I first uh, embarked on, on the mediumship train, I guess, literally, I, I mean, I, the knocking on my head was just getting so loud, I couldn't ignore it anymore. Um, I, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I think, um, well, I, I think of a night probably six, eight months ago now, well, almost a year ago, um, I was lying in bed and, um, I live in a building that is about uh, probably three blocks away from a very large cemetery. And, uh, I, <laughs> I had some company that night as I was, you know, reading, you know, just getting ready to go to sleep. And uh, I, <clears throat> I didn't know the, I never knew the funeral director here. I mean, his name is on, we, we live in a, in a small town, 10,000 people. Um, I didn't know his, him personally, but I had seen his photo and um, his name is on the business, of course. Um, anyway. So um, I had found myself walking in the cemetery a couple of weeks previously just to get out and, you know, um, get some movements and energy because I've been doing some, some work with my mentor. And uh, I, um, I noticed his, uh, his crypt there and I saw him there and uh, I said, oh, hi, you know, and <laughs> it was fine, nothing to me. Um, so anyway, that night, uh, this one particular night, um, I could see that essentially there was a, a massive um, exodus from the cemetery of um, energies. Um, and he was in the front of the uh, parade, if you will, <laughs> coming straight to my apartment. <laughs> yes. So it was like, oh, oops, here we go. <laughs> I mean, I had had so many signs and, and indications this was coming. But uh, I was uh, very surprised by that that night. And my the whole lawn, there's a, a huge lawn around this building and uh, it's an old house and um, the whole lawn was full. <clears throat> and um, I mean, I could see this, I'm not visually looking at the window, I'm seeing it through my third eye, you know, and uh, <laughs> anyway. um, I had about 30 to 40 people in my bedroom. Fortunately, it is a large bedroom. And um, <laughs> All of a sudden, I just thought, I guess I better, guess I better fix myself up a little bit and you know, straighten up. It was, it was, you know, looking back, it was humorous, but uh, I, I, yeah, I, I haven't talked about this to too many people, but I, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's me anyway. So um, there, there, with, there he was, and there were a number of people in the group that I knew, you know, who had passed and, um, they were all just basically saying, you know, um, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing. It's a big part of who you are. It's a big part of how you can help people heal in a very deep way. Because grief is, you know, one of the most painful things we can experience, the loss of a loved one. Um, and oftentimes, we just simply are not equipped to um, properly heal that. And, you know, many of us go to grief counseling. I know I did when my father died. Um, I wish I had had it when my grandfather died, although I was a child. Um, but, you know, for many of us, it just doesn't get to the bottom. And what I have found um, is it's, it's the evidentiary mediumship work that really heals many people. Um, and to see to see people you know coming in 
well, some of them are grief stricken um, and, you know, to see them um, completely changed after an hour, an hour and a half session um, so that, you know, they have just literally shed, you know, 200 pounds of potatoes off their back, literally. It's the weight has been so intense. They, you know, they are then free. And I've heard this from many people and I've seen their energy literally transform within an hour to an hour and a half, whatever session we're doing. Um, and, and, you know, for me, there just isn't a better feeling than that. I, I love seeing people happier, lighter, doing well. And, you know, the next day I always check in with people and, you know, hearing them say, you know, I didn't know that I could ever get past that. You know, I didn't know that I would ever be able to fully recover from that. And, you know, what, what happens is it's the very personal details that I get from the um, deceased loved ones who uh, literally sit in my living room. <laughs> Just before a session starts, they start to come in. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I still- Oh, you know, yeah. I, 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 find, yeah. I find myself tearing because oh, yeah. you did that for me. You did well, that I'm, for I'm, me with, with my father and, and we weren't meaning to talk about my father yeah. and yeah. him showing up and, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm so glad that Sarah, I Sarah I, so I, much yeah. of uh, the grief. Oh, sorry, the grief no. that I had been carrying around uh, with him. And it's you know it's, it, it's yeah. what happened with you, Debbie, is is a perfect example because many times people don't even realize how much they're still holding on to grief around a certain individual um and you know once we start to once i start i get the telephone like it's i'm like the telephone basically between the two sides and once i start to get these you know very personal messages you know um people know them and you know they know that yes in fact i am connected to their father their grandma you know whoever it is their brother um, and, you know, once these truths can be exchanged, which did not have a chance to be exchanged before the person died, it, it's unresolved issues, essentially. Once these, you know, communications start to go back and forth, people then, um, you know, that is when the true healing takes place because, you know, they know then the truth, which was not able to be expressed for some reason before the person died. And, you know, oftentimes it's because, you know, it's, it's an uncomfortable topic where people feel vulnerable and they don't want to fully open up to their loved ones before they die. And, you know, there's the, the phrase, you know, secrets taken to the grave, you know, well, it's basically, you know, bringing those secrets out so that they heal the people who are left. And, you know, um, for me, literally, um, I, nothing makes me happier because it's it's a transformative thing for people and sometimes they, they are coming for very different reasons and they end up having a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's so um, just so that the listeners can understand we had a session uh, the beginning of the year it's been many many months now and I was really wanting to connect with my grandmother and um, I had some questions for her, and um, I felt resolved in my relationship with her. And um, she uh, lived, uh, both of my grandmothers said, lived beautiful lives and great relationships, and felt really healthy relationships with them, as well as with my dad. But my dad, um, so the listeners know, was a very quiet man. He was not a man who talked and communicated much. And he was always present in my life as this tall, quiet man, unless you talked about cars um, and the tires and rims always came up because he was into hot rods and those kind of things, but um, which I absolutely love myself. And so that was usually the conversations that we would have or something maybe in the paper of our hometown paper. Um, and 
that was really the extent of it. And when he did pass, I was there. We had a very short period of time. But we did have the opportunity of, was there anything that we needed to talk about? And at that time, my dad said, no, I'm, I'm good. You know, there was nothing there. And I actually don't remember feeling like anything super pressing other than I wish I had, uh, we had talked every Sunday night for years, this last probably 10 years of his life. He still passed pretty early in life too, in the sixties. And, but uh, I didn't realize how much there was a piece of something that I needed to hear from him. And uh, about an, an incident that had happened when I was really young, uh, uh, nothing that they did terribly bad or, you know, against me or anything, but just a situation in our neighborhood about a burglar and being able to talk to him about it, not even realizing you know, that it was still there. And then been, him being able to share what he wasn't able to share was so healing. And to hear how proud he was of me, oh my gosh, it has freed my soul to know this information. And so your work really did feel like what you just said about lifting off like a hundred pounds of potatoes that I didn't even really realize that I was still carrying it with me. Um, and it was so, it was so beautiful, you know, and um, so, oh my goodness, I didn't expect to, to share that here. Oh my goodness. So, as I'm tearing up, but it was just so, so powerful being able to connect in such a graceful way and, and how it just all kind of occurred. So I'm just extremely blessed that we had that session. Um, Mary Jane, like it really was uh, life shifting and really owning more, even more of who I am. And um, and I think it even has improved my relationship with my mom, who's still here. You know, yeah, because I'm not surprised. I, I love hearing that, by the way, but I, I can feel that and I'm not surprised. Yeah, because... and, and I have a super healthy relationship with my mother. We, we don't yeah. have, oh, we're, I'm very fortunate that way. But yeah. I have a, a wonderful mom. And mm -hmm. Both my parents were wonderful people. My stepdad, everybody was, you know, I, I can't say I had, I've had some traumatic childhood, like unfortunately a lot of people have. Um, just, I think, normal trauma. <laughs> And um, so it was so beautiful, but yeah. so what I, what I wanted to uh, uh, find out is that I know that you mentioned, because uh, we've talked about the mediumship and you uh, connecting over, is that you had mentioned foristic, foristic intuitive, and I'm not sure our listeners would um, know and be able to connect that in and so I wanted to see if you wouldn't mind expanding on what that part of your gifts are of course um again this is something that just found me I did not go looking for this under any circumstances <laughs> <laughs> but um the, the big picture with me I, I'll just say it this way um my specialty I guess is empowering women um, at any stage in life, but especially during um, a breakup or uh, a separation and divorce situation. Um, and very often um, during separation and divorce, there will be things that are hidden from, um, you know, the partner. Um, sometimes the uh, ex will be hiding something and I have the ability, and I've been trained in, in various um, techniques um, by a psychic detective um, to, to see what's behind the scenes, what hidden. Um, you know, yes, it's my intuitive abilities, but there are various um, techniques that I've been trained to use to find out what the truth is around the people who are surrounding my client, the people who are connected to my client and including their ex. Um, you know, sometimes of course there will be a, a hidden relationship, um, you know, hidden assets, you know, all kinds of things that, that people do sometimes when they're just not at their best or don't have the best intentions. 
Um, or, you know, maybe they're just, you know, while they're going through separation and divorce and they are fearful, you know, whatever the reason is, there's no judgment for me, of course, obviously, but, um, no, I'm, I'm here to support women, um, so that they have the truth around, you know, their relationship, whatever the relationship is and at whatever stage it's at, um, so that they, you know, are empowered and able to, um, be the best version of themselves. You know, I know that's a that's a very commonly used phrase these days, but it's about discovering your empowerment within yourself. But, you know, um, for me, um, and I believe the reason I'm in this, <laughs> that I do the forensic intuitive work, um, is because without the truth, uh, we really can't fully heal something. Um, which is true for the mediumship work as well, because, you know, that is why we need um, the messages from the deceased people that we uh, have that connection with so that we can have the truth that has been unspoken so that we can then heal because the truth is truly what heals us. Um, so once we have the truth, we can process through it. And, you know, that may look like, you know, coaching or, or energetic healing or guidance, you know, various things. But for me, um, being able to find out the truth um, about what the people are doing around my client, um, which are preventing uh, her from moving forward into her path and purpose, into uh, a life of joy and what she's meant to experience um, is enormously important. Um, because, you know, and some people will resonate with this, others may not, but there are many people um, who wear what I call facades um, or illusions. Um, and they do it for, you know, various reasons. Some of them are simply fear-based, you know, it's about protecting themselves. And, uh, you know, again, I, there's no judgment there because, you know, they've all come from different places and, you know, a lot of people are just simply doing the best they can to get by. Um, so, you know, but sometimes these illusions and facades are there for other reasons. Um, and being able to see behind them and what actually the person is, uh, what their intentions are and um, what, you know, what, what their bottom line is, if you will, um, uh, their character is about is um it's really important um for clients to heal fully um so that's hugely important for me um kind of a, a fun thing that i that i do um is um and i love this but um when women are ready to date you know and they're wanting to uh, get to know someone better on social media or um on a dating website um I read photos and I've been trained to do this by the psychic detective that I've worked with. Um, and literally the, um, the eyes are all that I look at. It doesn't matter what the face looks like or any other aspect of the photo, no. The answers are in the eyes. And um, yeah, I get very clear messages as to what the intentions are of the person, what their character is like, you know. Um, whether, you know, what, what their plans are you know, in terms of this person that I'm working with, you know, how they feel about them, um, you know, what, if they're hiding something. Um, so it's very, um, you know, it's, it's very, well, <laughs> it's very empowering work, you know, for the women because it, it gives them um, the truth when, um, you know, the person could be holding things back and, you uh, and you know, pretending to be something they simply are not. Um, and this is quite common, unfortunately, on dating websites. And you know, it prevents women from being hurt. It prevents them from wasting their time. Um, so I find it very rewarding, let's put it that way. <laughs> because I love, I love the truth and I love to um, you know, shine light on things so that people know um, where to move forward and how to do things uh, for their highest and best. Yeah. You know, what's so amazing is that the, the journeys that you're talking about is when you're at the end of a relationship and you know that you can't quite put your finger on it, right? Like there's something intuitively in your gut or your feeling and you don't, 
you don't know what that unspoken truth is. And to be able to come to terms with it and kind of get rid of that, um, that wondering, it, it kind of weighs on you. Like, yes. is it me? No, maybe not. Maybe there really isn't something to be able to really understand. No, no, what they say is really what it really was. And it, I could see where that could be, would be very healing to understand. And then when you go through your own process of healing, are then eventually at some point ready to put yourself out there. We have as women, especially over, you know, if you say you're over 40, I think, especially you've experienced quite a bit of life and been able to, you know, do you trust yourself? I could see where it could really help us really trust ourselves at a super deep level in the healing process of the, the end of the closure of relationships. And then when you're like, okay, I'm ready to open myself up, you're open, but you still have some of that fear of even when you do open your, your heart and you're ready to bring in love and give love to know that, am I, is this worth the risk? And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's unfortunately it's not where they are, where they're, maybe they're trying to be somebody in good intentions, but that's truly not who they, who they really are. And it really isn't your, your person. It, exactly. Um, you know, and I think um, that's, you know, for me, that's one of the most rewarding things um, is being able to weed out the people, you know, if someone sends me, you know, um, 10 photographs of, of people that she's been communicating with or just, you know, connected with, um, you know, to be able to weed out eight of them immediately. It's, you know, that, that saves a lot of time, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of hurt, you know, it's, it's just, well, it's empowering, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I just love to be able to help people move through, um, you know, to see that, you know, the, these two men are, you know, they're both genuine. Um, and, you know, this one is more, you know, something and this one has more of this. Um, you know, there's still some, some healing that needs to be done around commitment on this one or, you know, whatever um, the situation may be. But um, just knowing the truth and being able to um, share that with someone so that they can they can be their best, they can be empowered, they can know that their next step, you know, um, is actually serving them in their, in, in the highest and best way. Um, you know, it, 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 and that's it, a couple, it, you know, a while back when uh, being divorced last year, right? And, and uh, feeling ready to get out there and you start conversations with people and and um and then i think for me it isn't about being i've really been so hurt more of a bit disappointed but the disappointment kind of wears on you oh absolutely i mean you know it, it you know if, if you've had you know a number of bad experiences with dating websites or meeting people online you know you can be quite um you know well, you have trouble with trust, of course, and, and then you think, you know, my gosh, you know, when am I going to find this person? And, um, you know, that, that's another thing that I do. But anyway, but to bring your person to you, I do. Yes. That work. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it really, it levels the playing field in my, in my mind, because, you know, if people are not being genuine, if they're not being honest about who they are, um, women need to know, men need to know too. I mean, you know, because there are women doing just that same thing, you know, and so I'm, I'm not, I'm certainly not men against men in any way, um, but I, I primarily resonate with women um, because I'm about women's empowerment. But I, I do, you know, work with men occasionally um, doing that kind of work as well so that they can see um, who these women are that they are communicating with um, and wanting to get to know as well. Um, in fact, I think, you know, um, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite interesting on these dating sites because, um, the, um, you know, some, some people mean well, but, you know, whether or not they can actually follow through then 
and, you know, be um, a good partner or, you know, have, do have the same goals and, and uh, aspirations for a relationship, but don't have the courage to say it, that can very often be the case. So uh, there are a lot of dynamics that, um, that come up for people and just being able to see what the truth is behind someone's photo. <laughs> um, it's very, um, it's very insightful and it's very rewarding for me. Um, and people, um, you know, they, they just don't want to waste their time. They don't want to be hurt. They don't want to be disappointed. So uh, I love being able to do that. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> You've been able to, to trust yourself and uh, put yourself out there because I think at a certain point, everybody's experienced some type of serious heartbreak and yeah. the process, the time. And as I think as we mature and get older, we're like, I really would like my partner. And and if I'm in my mid fifties, you know, let's be frank, I don't have 40 years to spend dating or <laughs> like, you know, if you're able to help them not spend their time, um, you know, I'm definitely gonna have to get myself another session, I guess, but um, <laughs> it's not out there on some of the sites. I actually, I think I just paused it, but uh, because of this exact thing, like it was, it was extremely disappointing, especially when you think that you've connected with somebody more than once. And then you're like, okay, you know, like you can imagine we're all so unique. And I think as we really get to, we figure out, especially after big heartbreaks, um, what you truly are seeking. And you think that, that they're seeking it and you want to believe it. And I think anybody who's listening to the podcast is an empath. They, they feel they're more sensitive folks. And, and yeah. so they probably are attracting different type of people in the first place. And we're not going after the, the norm person, generally speaking. Yeah, I think most people who would say that they're listening to the podcast, they're not going after this normal person who's not conscious or oh, have some awareness. And so, uh, and then as we age, you add in just the basic statistics of, you know, where there might have been, you know, a thousand candidates, you know, you start narrowing it down and you're like, okay, there's about 20 people around. And then you're talking to, if you are talking to 10, that would be a, quite a few, right? Like usually it's one couple at a time, if that, for some, right? It could be one person that you've talked to in months and then it's, it's a disappointment, you know? Like you think maybe something clicked and then, you know, the whole common thing too of ghosting. Yes, yes. You know, when you... Yeah. How often does that happen when you talk to, when I talk to girlfriends, I mean, wonderful, uh, beautiful, like in their souls, their lives are together. And yet, you know, and they're all, they're all over 40. They have so much to offer and then they get ghosted. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, ghosting is something that, uh, that I, I look at uh, potential for that um, actually when I when I read photos um, and you know there are many reasons for that of course there's always something that the person is not being honest about that's the bottom line when someone ghosts you um, or breadcrumbs you you know whatever term you want yeah. to use. yeah right, right. <laughs> um, yeah haven't different. been ghosted recently I'm like what happened you're just gone <laughs> uh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, so powerful. it's something unsaid. Yeah. Yeah. It's something unsaid. Um, you know, there, there sometimes is another relationship and they don't want to say that, or, you know, sometimes, um, and this, this happens, um, with men, um, who are widowers, you know, and, uh, I've seen a, a situation like this recently. Um, a man who, um, lost his wife, uh, within the last year, um, and he, despite the fact he um, was communicating with this woman, and he seems, you know, he, he definitely is a good human being. I mean, I, could, I can see, you know, that he is, um, but he simply is not ready for a relationship yet, despite the fact he's on a dating website. Um, and he's not ready because he hasn't processed through the grief, and he's not grounded. 
um, you know, he's, he's trying to connect with his deceased wife, um, you know, because he felt that she was his soulmate and, um, you know, he needs healing, you know, truthfully, um, and a mediumship session, <laughs> but, um, so, you know, he can move on after, um, after the death of his wife. Um, so, you know, him communicating with women on dating websites, you know, he, he comes across and he has, you know, good intentions. Um, but, you know, that is the issue with, with this particular man that, uh, that I, um, had come up and work and, uh, yeah, he simply was not ready for a relationship. Um, I know he will be when he gets the feeling that he needs. Um, and he's a great, great man. But uh, yeah, that's an example, you know, of, of um, what can what can come up. Um, another thing, of course, that I'm sure you're aware of um, is there are quite a few uh, men out there actually um, with someone else's photo. And um, I mean, you can always tell the ones that are, you know, that look like they're from a modeling agency. They're clearly not going to be a real person. But um, there are people with, you know, a genuine photo, but it is not, um, you know, you can, I can see them that by looking at the photo, the person is not, um, you know, they There for dating, they're there to um, scam someone. You know, they're there to um, abscond with funds. You know, they're they're there to, you know, um, do something um, illegal. You know, so that comes up for me as a very um, definite um, message. Um, you know that this is not you know a good person to talk to. Get away, block them, whatever you need to do. Um, and then there will be people who have someone else's photo up. And um, for whatever reason, they don't want their own photo to be shown. And that is also, of course, um, a big um, kind of red flag um, because it's simply not the same person as is being shown in the photo. So um, that's always good to know. <laughs> Just another wonderful thing that I see on dating website photos. Oh my goodness. You know, I actually have what, uh, one of my good friends had an experience, um, maybe it was last year. And, you know, when things were starting to open back up, she had gone back out on a site. And for three different instances in a row of somebody she was connecting with, talking with, even on the phone, right? So she thought, okay. Um, but they all end up going on these trips and end up at some point asking for money. Uh, yeah. Yeah. With these almost seemingly realistic and it wasn't like it happened right away right it happened weeks in usually weeks in of a lot of contact a lot of and then out of nowhere anywhere from you know a hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars mm -hmm. and and she knew she just knew right like oh but not so much that she you know didn't lose any money but the disappointment exactly it was really yeah. the disappointment in the weeks and the times, you know, the weeks that were involved with something that you hadn't met yet in person, which was a normal process because you want to get to know somebody and feel a little safe before you actually meet them in person. And then to go through all of that and right about the point you're yeah. going to start uh, meeting them when they come back from this trip. Um, and they all presented, you know, wanting funds. It was really, it was really heartbreaking to even watch and listen to the process. So I, uh, you know, we should almost change what you call yourself from this uh, forensic, really, because how powerful for how many, how many single women are over 40, honestly, yeah. right? Like, and, yeah. and, and who are generally open to, uh, being in it and they're in a healthy spot they've done their work and they're ready to be in a partnership and yet they're attracting this so what are they blocking that's bringing this in and as well as once you can get in there and clear that out mm -hmm. and uh, then having somebody who's kind of got your back I say right like of, okay this is no, no. And then you're just able to move on before you have invested a great amount of your, your time.
time, one of our most precious commodities, and the disappointment. Exactly. Yeah. No. Because um, it is really good to have someone to, you know, support you through a period of time in dating, um, um, and and separation and divorce for that matter. I had someone. Uh, my mentor supported me through that process um, during my separation and divorce. And, you know, it's, it's, again, it's, you know, even if, you know, and I, I agree with you, I'm sure most of your audience is empathic. Um, you know, sometimes we just can't see our own stuff nearly as well as someone else can uh, with a fresh set of eyes. And, um, you know, having someone who has your back so that you can find your person who then will take over and does have your back, you know? So instead of being, um, you know, out there kind of um, feeling, feeling unsure, vulnerable, it's, it's really helpful to have someone to shed light on, um, on what's going on and uh, who you're talking to. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's so powerful. So there's lots of women listening now, Mary Jane, and they're like, what, how, how do they, how can they work with you? How can they reach you? Well, um, my website is Mary J Allen and it's A L L E N. So Mary J Allen.com or my, um, there's a contact me on there. Um, and, uh, my webs, uh, my website email address is client care at Mary J Allen.com. Or you can find me on Facebook. Um, I'm Mary Allen on Facebook, A-L-L-E-N. Um, you can reach me in any of those ways. Um, and, you know, what often happens with people is, uh, depending on what they're looking for, what kind of support, what level of support they're looking for, uh, people often book an initial session with me. Um, to see how I work and, um, you know, see if we're a good match and for both of us. And uh, I offer programs, of course. I don't talk about it on my website, but, um, you know, it basically, um, it's, it's a period of time with, you know, set sessions and uh, a lot of email support um, and reading of photos or, you know, whatever there might be needed um, and clearing between sessions um, because when we're going through something uh, like separation or divorce or you know uh, a trauma in a dating situation um, sometimes we need that extra support and um, and I certainly offer that as well so oh yeah and I can say having used your uh, I've had multiple sessions over the years and it has been yeah, extremely empowering for myself, you know, and been able to trust my own intuition in those areas that is so tender for us as men and women, but, you know, our hearts are, are just so, the love relationship with our hearts is so unique, you know, and yes. uh, where you, you know, am I going to be able to bring this person into that next level, right, versus our friends and even our super close friends so um, your work is just so no needed right we just need more love in this world genuine love absolutely genuine love and connection with the same intentions and people are at the same places so thank you so much mary jane this has just been so delightful uh, which of course i knew it would be but i'm so grateful that you were here with us today and uh, thank you Oh,